Welcome to Crash Course in Commercial Real Estate. We converted our in-house training program to a podcast to teach you prospecting, negotiation, business planning, and other fundamental skills to become a successful commercial real estate agent. And now, here's your host, Brady Collier. All right, welcome back to Commercial Real Estate Training. This is our third video on prospecting. We're going to start out with how to leave a voicemail. And so Shannon, I've got a voicemail here that was left by a real estate broker on my voicemail. I'm going to try to play this here, and then I'm going to get Kyle's feedback on this. Hey, Brady, this is Britt Raymond with SRS. I am reaching out to introduce myself. I understand that you are active and developing in the West Texas area. I'm an investment sales agent that works with developers like yourself to help them source new opportunities, introduce tenants, and ultimately sell the finished product. I'd love to talk to you about our services and where we could add value to you and your team. Please give me a call when you get a chance at 704-517-4712. That's 704-517-4712. I also have your email address. I'll send you some information about um, myself and my team. Feel free to get back to me that way as well. Thank you. End of message to delete. Okay, so I hope that everybody out there could hear that. Um, so Kyle, let's just run through what was in your mind sticks out because when you're prospecting, you're going to get a voicemail a lot. Shannon, you're going to get a voicemail a lot and you're going to leave messages because if you, you think, oh, I don't want to leave a message. If you don't leave a message, there's no chance they're calling you back. If you do leave a message, then when you call them back, they remember your message and you're just one step further down the road because they already know who you are. So you are going to leave messages whenever you're pr prospecting. Um, and so Kyle, this, this is Britt Raymond, SRS. Um, she's a power broker out of New York. She's really, really, really good. There's things that she did great on that voicemail. Let's talk about them. Yeah. So a couple questions, cause I know how it ends. Cause I, yeah, I'm familiar with Britt, but did, uh, what'd she email over? Okay. Well, I gotta be a hundred percent honest. Britt has sold several assets for me because she called on me. She met with me at a conference. She has sold several, several deals for me. And so I'm driving back to our training one day. I said, Hey Britt, Call me and leave the voicemail that you leave every single time you're calling oh. on a <laughs> okay. I didn't know that. And okay. she's like, hey, no sweat. I'm prospecting in like two hours. I'll just start with you. So I let her go to voicemail. And so uh, because the other voicemail that I told Graham and Shannon, I was, it was was a really good voicemail by a net lease broker. I deleted it. And I told you, oh, I'm going to let this. So somewhat mm -hmm. stage, but she leaves the same voicemail. Very for, much stage. Uh, very <laughs> much stage. But she leaves the same voicemail for everybody. Yeah. So let's talk about what she did well. Okay. So I think... It, she was that was full disclosure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. honest and honest. all. Thanks. Yes. So confident. She was confident. Very um, confident. You could tell she was an expert. She was comfortable on the phone. Um, you know, when I think about the voicemail, I think the most important thing is is the hook. Like, what's hooking you? What's getting you to call back? And the one thing in that, a lot of it, honestly, was a little general. That you, there's a good chance you may not return that voicemail. Just depending on when you get it, how busy you are, how many voicemails you're getting, there needs to be something that forces you to want to call back. And maybe she's going to follow up with that in her email. That's right. That's why I asked what she sent over. But one thing she said in there is that we like to make tenant introductions or something to that she effect. She did say that. She said her business is not just selling the assets that I currently own, but when there's tenants looking in, in my area, she wants to introduce them to me because she knows what tenants are going around. So that was her hook. That's the hook. Is that I want to add value to you by bringing you tenants. And her partner, Kyle Fant, he, he really does. They really send us tenants. Hey, we heard so-and-so is looking active in West Texas. Y'all should call on them. And they said, we're not going to send these leads that we get to anybody else. Y'all are the developer. We want to work with y'all. And so they very, they try very hard to be a value add in that regard. Because everyone wants to sell your Everybody asset. wants to sell. Them. And yeah. so that, that doesn't necessarily incite you to They're to the only net lease brokers I've ever worked with that said, I want to have a constant flow of tenants to introduce you to so you can develop shopping centers around them so I can turn around and sell those. It's good for you. It's good for me. Right. So they said we track those things. So that was her hook. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think was great about what she did? Um, I mean, I thought she, she, I noticed she stated her number twice. Awesome. So I, I that's one of my that. pet peeves when people leave their number and you don't catch it. And you're like, you got to keep re-listening to the voicemail. Yes. So then in this business, my guess is if you have to I've not to it, called you're people back before because of the number. Like, Always. oh, I didn't get it. And, uh, and yeah. you move If you're not on. competent enough to make your number <laughs> clear, you don't, yeah. So yeah. that's a great one. Very good. Talk to me about her tone, her voice, her, I mean, just... Um, cause I thought she was warm. 
She sounded warm. She sounded upbeat. Yes. You can tell she's smiling on the other, like through the phone, the way her voice comes across. And so, and she, and I understood everything she said. Very clear, very confident, sounded very competent. That's because she is very competent. And so. Um, Concise, like it didn't go on forever. Yeah, you, she you didn't wear too me long of a voicemail. And then she said, I'm going to follow up. If you just call and say, yeah, give me a buzz back, and you put the full burden of follow up on them, you're not. But if you say, hey, I actually have your email here, I'm going to follow up with an email in case you want to reply to me that way. And then in that email, you can put as much or as little as you want to. So I thought that was also a nice thing that she initiated the follow up. And if I don't call her back within a week, she's going to call and say, hey, Brady, this is Britt again. Just want to call and see if you got my email. Wanted to set up that call to talk about blah, blah, blah. And she's going to use that just to, to move it to the next level. Oh, see, I and didn't if you, think about that. And if you get them on the phone, if they happen to answer and they have an email from you, have you had a chance to look at that email? No, it goes to my spam. Hey, do you mind pulling up real quick? I want to point out a few things of what's sold in your market. And then that, then you have something that you're pointing to. Yeah, that second and third call. And if you actually have something that's a true value at that moment, then you can leave that in the voicemail. Hey, Brady, I know you don't know me, but I'm, I'm with NAI. I have a client who's looking for to build a new product in West Texas. Want to see if we could talk about that, circle up on it. Oh, I'm calling that person back. So if you actually have that value, that hook. So she said, I'm, I've got this, but if you have it, then say it in the voicemail. That's the one thing I would say in the voicemail that was lacking is there wasn't something so strong that would immediately force the callback, which makes sense because it was staged. Staged. Yes. Like when she makes the call, she might have that thing. And to really emphasize the importance of ongoing prospecting to use this real example, I mean, there's no telling how many times Kyle and Britt called you guys you know, probably a dozen times. Then you have a meeting at a trade show in Las Vegas. Then you let them pitch on a few assets. They don't get selected, but they stayed consistent. This is the exact story that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so th- they were just persistent. They'll they even say, to- they'll even say, let us value, let us give you a proposal. We realize you have other brokers you're working with, and that's totally fine. We don't mind putting the time in, but our proposal is going to give you more cap rate data. It's going to, you know, it's going to give you more data points. It's going to be good for you. And if you don't select us, no hard feelings. What am I going to say? No, don't give me a proposal. I've already got three guys that I'm interviewing. I'm going to give it to one of those three. And they just took all the burden off of me. So I said, okay, I give you a proposal. Well, after two proposals, when they have the most aggressive pricing, all of a sudden they're in the top three. And one of those other guys who was always the, you know, not the most aggressive pricing dropped off my list. And that's how they worked their way in. And now they've got two different properties for me on the market right now. Yeah, very long approach. I'm a real estate broker. They are listing my properties right now, putting them out on the market for me because they're experts. They're true value. I want to go uh, do a, a few more things before we close this out. So voicemails. If you have questions on that, I think uh, thinking through that ahead of time is valuable. We've been doing all of this on phone prospecting. Is phone prospecting the only prospecting? No. But why do we focus on the phone? Volume. Volume. Because when I was trained in real estate, he said, man, people like face-to-face. Face-to-face is great. But for you to set a meeting, go to their office, shake their hand, come back to the office, you have invested an hour, hour plus of your time. During that hour, the other broker right across is going to make seven or eight prospecting calls. You've called on one client, they've called on seven or eight clients. He said, if you just do the math and the hours in the day, you never hit 150 outgoing prospecting connections if it's all face-to-face. But face-to-face, if you can get a face-to-face with a decision maker, that's more valuable perhaps than 10 calls. But for volume and to build a huge business, it's going to be a lot of phone work. Yeah. So you start with the, the easiest to do the most of that's the least effective would be email or mailers, you know, you can do thousands of those, whether they're mass or direct, they're super easy, but probably the least effective. Um, Then phone calls, a little bit harder to do, a little bit more of a barrier, a little bit more effective. Face-to-face. A whole lot more effective. Phone calls are a whole lot more effective than emails. Right, right. And then most effective is getting in front of somebody face-to-face, but it's the hardest to do, the hardest to schedule, the hardest to catch somebody, and you can do the least of it. And so I think All of them need to be part of your prospecting and part of your business, um, but making sure you split them accordingly depending on what your focus is. And a lot of the businesses, um, owners that you're calling on, they may be Lubbock people. You may have known them 20 years, going and visit them. It's warm. You may need to do that, and that may be the best thing with some of your time in the early weeks. Um, But Britt lives in New York City. I'm in Lubbock, Texas, and 
I'm one of her clients that lists assets with her all over the, you know, all over West Texas, but she has people like me all over the United States. Well, you can't do that face to face all over the United States. So it just depends on what type of commercial real estate business you're in determines what balance. Now we have done several face to faces because we see each other at ICSC tech, they come to which ICSC is a trade, it's a trade, it's a trade show. show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, yes, let's, uh, let's move on. Ideally, those face-to-faces are after several phone calls where you've warmed it, it up. They were. Yourself they were. I wouldn't have given her a face-to-face if she hadn't proven value through right. phone calls and through email stuff and so on and so forth. Because at the trade shows, I only meet with two to three of the net lease because I normally meet with tenants about shopping center spaces because that's what adds most value to my business. So I only give like two to three net lease brokers any time at all at the trade shows because the time is really precious there, those face-to-faces. Um, let's move on. Okay. Um, Whenever you have a successful call, and you're going to have successful calls this week, next week, when you have a successful call, what do you do? Follow up with them. (laughs) Well, yeah, you follow up with them. But as soon as you have a big win on a call, what I was taught. Call somebody else. Call somebody else. Call it a day. Go home. (laughs) I call it a day and go home. (laughs) Um, Because you just built this massive adrenaline rush. You had this huge wave of momentum. And the excitement that's in your void that you're feeling in your heart, you can go and celebrate with Chase and Joe and Kyle and walk around the office and bleed all of the excitement out through celebration around the office. That's okay. Or you can go down your prospecting list and say, what's the best potential that person? And you dial that phone and you take all that energy into the next call and they can feel that energy. So I was taught, and I'm a firm believer, that when you're prospecting and you have a great call, ride it right into the next call. And then that call goes great. Just keep riding that wave of momentum and you're eventually going to fatigue because prospecting is a lot of hard work. So you can only, I could only prospect an hour, hour and a half. And so I would time block, you know, 10 to 1130, but then I'd have to step away because I would just get weary and then I'd go eat whatever. And I'd step back into it mid afternoon. So yeah, momentum, I would say ride your momentum. Any comments on riding momentum? No, I agree. Keep going. Yeah. This may be too much for you. But a guy who was a sales trainer who came to our company to sales training, he said, everybody in here needs to right now develop a power move. Everybody's like, have you lost your love of mind? He goes, no, listen, whatever's going on with your body, that's going to affect your mind and your heart. That's going to come out your voice. He said, so develop a move, do the move, pump yourself up for that call. And then as soon as you get yourself pumped up, make the call and, and create your own energy and momentum. And so you're going to think I'm the biggest dork in the whole world, which is fine. So I did. I was like, okay, he's a sales trainer. I'll do it. I'm young. So I, I developed my power move and I do it before every, and while I was prospecting every day for years. And no, no, was it a fit? Was that it? Yeah, it was was my double fist bump. Double fist bump. I was like, okay, Okay. I'm going in this call and I'm getting myself psyched up and I double fist bump and then I would dial. Oh, it's not listening to ACDC right before you. No, 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 I don't do (laughs) ACDC. I fist bump. Um, Okay. Uh, the other thing I'd say, whether you do your power move or not, um, this is all momentum stuff. I like to picture an ideal outcome. When I call this person, I've got value. They need my value. They're better off if they take my call. This person, we're going to make money together. Um, I'm going to become a trusted advisor to them. Like remind myself of all the good things and then take that positive mentality into the call. And when they hang up on you, when they reject you, it's easier just to blow it off, let it go, and then keep going. Because you stay, yeah, you keep yourself in a right state of mind. And in your state of mind, that's your responsibility. That's not their responsibility. And so you have to keep yourself in a right state of mind. I have a whole morning routine that feels great every day that I do so that I can come to the office in a right state of mind to where I can work with tons of energy. And so I think your state of mind is super important when you're prospecting. Thoughts before we go on? I agree. I okay. agree. Nothing bad there. Um, remember why you're doing it. I'm doing this because this is how I'm going to build my business. And if I do this, if I do the right things, this is how it's going to turn out for me. Um, I'm going to be here in a year if I just keep doing the right things. So remind yourself why. So, um, power move. Keep yourself in the right state of mind. Remind yourself why. And then my last thing is enjoy it. Laugh off uh, rejection and revel in success. Just enjoy the ride because prospecting for me is the biggest adrenaline rush. It's just a huge blast of energy. And in, in my sales career, it's one of my favorite things was picking up the phone and dialing for dollars. Even when you were brand new? 
Hey, when I was brand new, but I'm a, I'm a guy who likes a challenge. I'm going to go play in a volleyball tournament tonight, and uh, I'm the worst guy on the team. And I like a challenge. I'm like, I'm going to rise to that occasion. So I love it. I love a challenge. And so it gets me psyched up every time. And then when I prospect today on something or with somebody, say that you want to make 20 calls together, bring me your list. We'll dial together. You'll hear them hang up on me. You'll hear me get rejected. We'll have some wins. And so I still enjoy it. And remembering what's the worst thing that could happen. And I'm not saying visualize that, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's yeah, not like not dying bad. or anything. It's like, okay, that person didn't realize the value. Sometimes the worst thing is a good thing. If they hang up on you and they save you a bunch of wasted time, you know, that's really not that bad. Yeah. Um, okay. My last thing on prospecting, get a few great clients. Kyle, how many great clients do you have? Five. Seriously, you counted them all in your mind? Uh, Brian, Tony, Brady, so on and so forth. Yeah, four, four to five. Four, four, four to five. five. Mm-hmm. Kyle has an amazingly successful real estate career. He's doing amazing. He has five great clients, and he's built a whole business around them. So my last thing on prospecting, find five great clients, prospect to help them achieve their goals, and that'll guide you. That'll, that'll drive you forward. It's going to be great. Do you have any uh, closing, parting shot? Questions, thoughts on prospecting? Not yet. You're going to. Yes, you're going to. If you do all of those things, you're gonna. It's gonna be great, and you're gonna do great at it. Any parting shot for her? That's all I got. All right, that's prospecting number three. Let's go get on the phones. Yeah, let's go dial.